Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I figure um, it's probably about time to talk about uh, one of the uh, complaints and one of the things that uh, come up most often um, here in my project, which is the uh, complaints and the confusion about uh, lineups. So uh, most of you um, who have been following uh, my projects know that I kind of come up with my own lineups. And to be honest with you, I don't really put that much effort into them. I uh, usually will just arrange players according to um, OPS and um, kind of go down from there, figuring that I want players who um, are more productive offensively to hit high in the order and knowing that it would take me probably too much time to uh, compute any actual advanced metrics for these players. That's been basically the idea behind it, and it's worked for the most part uh, pretty well. It does, uh, though, sometimes lead to some strange things, and there was somebody who was very upset the other day that I had uh, Ted Williams hitting leadoff for the Red Sox in 1949. Now, I mean, I'm not so certain that I fully understand why you want your best and most productive offensive player to bat third, since uh, the chances are that he will very rarely lead off an inning. A player like Ted Williams with a lot of walks strikes me as the sort of person you actually want to hit lead off, but I know he didn't do that in real life. And that sort of brings up what the big question is here today, which is, um, should we really pay a lot of attention to exactly what batting orders were like in real life or not? Now, I can tell you something. I definitely am not a huge fan of this idea that uh, what we really should be doing is um, doing exactly the same batting orders as happen in real life. There are numerous reasons why I think that uh, projects should um, uh, shy away from uh, uh, devoting themselves exactly to the as-played schedule and to the exact um, uh, lineups that were used in real life. The biggest reason, of course, is because uh, you run into weird things if uh, your team just so happens to be in the pennant race. So um, I'll give you an example here. And uh, this uh, will be a pretty uh, obvious example, I think, to um, some of you. When we uh, go take a look over here at the screen, uh, here we have it. Um, we're looking at the uh, 1986 Mets. So we know that the 86 Mets uh, ended up clinching the uh, pen at what? It was probably September 18th, I think. Um, and uh, trying to look through this and uh, remember. At any rate, uh, when you go through this, I think it was uh, the, 18th, the 17th that it was clinched. You'll look at their uh, lineup for the 18th. Yeah, this is correct. You'll see I've looked through all the players. This is a problem you run into on September 18th, which um, could be in the middle of the pennant race for your season. The Mets have Stan Jefferson leading off, followed by Tuffle, and then Dave Magadan at first. Right? Um, you have Kevin Mitchell on right, Mazzilli on left. Johnson at third, Elster is short, and John Gibbons the catcher with Rick Anderson on the mound, right? So these are a lot of sort of September call-up guys who are playing for the Mets the day after um, they clinch. And uh, I think if you watch the broadcast of that game, they say something about, you know, your manager knows what, what uh, you know what your manager thinks of you if he has you uh, uh, playing in the game after they clinch the pennant. Now they beat the Cubs 5 nothing. But this is a problem. This is a major problem because if this game is of a lot of crit is uh, very critical for your pennant race, you have the Mets with this totally wacky lineup. And I mean, what are you going to do about it, right? Because if you're playing with real life lineups and you've been going so far with real life lineups, you run into this problem, right? There are other. Um, instances and examples of uh, real life lineups giving you something that may not necessarily be so realistic. I'm going to pull up here another one that's uh, quite famous and very well known. Uh, so this is uh, from the uh, 1980 uh, Oakland Athletics. Um, 1980 Oakland Athletics, we want to look and pay attention to the starting pitchers. They started McCaddy two days in a row. Steve McCaddy um, started on uh, both April 14th and April 15th, right? So what exactly happened then? We'll go look at the uh, game logs for 1980 for McCaddy. On April 14th, he was uh, pitching uh, at home against Seattle. He went uh, two innings actually one and two-thirds, gave up five runs, five hits, five earned runs, and uh, Billy Martin took him out and put him in the next game where he pitched eight and a third, giving up uh, seven hits and three runs, all three earned. And uh, the uh, A's won that one 12 to three, right? And so, like, the problem that you have is that if you're playing through the 1980 season with real-life lineups turned on, you have McCaddy starting two games in a row, what if he throws a complete game the first time around on the 14th? Well, he wouldn't have started the 15th, but now in your replay, he's starting both the 14th and the 15th, no matter what. This is especially a problem if you're doing a 1980 replay with real-life lineups and transactions and you're in charge of, I don't know, like the Montreal Expos or something like that, right? Because you have this thing happening in the other league that you're not aware of that could create a huge problem, especially if you have a game that um, has a penalty for uh, using pitchers uh, when they are pitching a short rest. 
as does games like, I don't know, Diamond Mine Baseball or Out of the Park Baseball, right? So you've got a big problem. This is not the only time in Major League history, by the way, that this thing happens, right? This happens actually fairly frequently. And so the question is, what do you do with it? My argument is that the best thing to do with this is to forget about real life lineups and create your own and use your own and look for patterns and look for guys who are hot and guys who are not and do your own lineup manipulation that way. That, I would argue, puts you more in the driver's seat of your replay and leads to a much more enjoyable experience overall. It is, however, difficult, especially if you're doing that for every single team in the league. So this is where I'm coming to uh, all of you and asking what kind of uh, thoughts and feelings you happen to have about lineup creation. Uh, do you really think it's important to stick exactly to what happened in real life? Should you use real life as a model? Or should you go just nuts and do whatever it is that you want to do and figure, well, you know, if a guy's overused a little bit, so what? It's not that big of a deal as long as the transactions are real. That third part is kind of what my approach has been. Although in retrospect, I I probably should do a better job of making sure the lineups are the same as in real life. Any future projects, I think that's what we'll do. So I'd love to know what you guys think about the lineup problem. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.